Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be setting up the animations and the animation blueprint for our mech character. So having said that, by the end of the day you are going to have a fully playable player character which is going to be able to run forwards, backwards, left, right and all of that good stuff along with the animations for your attack abilities. Now you won't be able to use those animation for the attack abilities just yet as this video is going to focus on the movement side of things and then later on as we go deeper and deeper into the series we can start working on those attack abilities. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you have got the latest version of the project files. Within here, under Mech Combat, Meshes and Main Character, you have got a variety of animations for things like idling, jumping, running, walking, and its various attack abilities as well. What you need to do if you haven't done so already is import these into your engine. So the location I want you to import this into is Mech Combat, go to meshes and then go to main character and I just want you to drop it into here. So select these files, all of the ones that have got the name underscore anim in them and then just drag and drop this into your content browser like that. What you want to do here with the FBX import options, turn off import mesh and then for your skeleton you have got a couple of different options. You want to make sure this is set to robo underscore character mesh. If you set it to the hammer, it's just going to really break things and so make sure you have got your existing character selected for that. Once you've done that, go ahead and just press import all and this is going to import those animations so we can start working with them inside of Unreal Engine. Give it a couple of seconds and we're going to be able to take a look at these animations to make sure they're all working. So the first one I'm going to look at is my walking, so I'm just going to double click on this to open it up and it's going to open up the animation editor inside of Unreal Engine. What you should be able to see straight away is your robo dude just running on the spot there playing that animation over and over. What you shouldn't have is any deformed bones or bits and pieces sticking out. What you've got there should be perfectly fine. So let's talk about actually getting this into the game, something playable. To do that, what we're going to need is an animation blueprint. And the animation blueprint is going to tell the engine when to play certain animations. If you want to have an in-depth look into using and creating animation blueprints, I definitely advise that you go ahead and check out my entire series on animation blueprints. There's a lot to cover. But for what you're going to need for this game, I will be covering it in this series. To create an animation blueprint within your content browser, right click, go to animation, and then from there, create an animation blueprint. It's then going to ask you which skeleton you want to use. And once again, you want to make sure it is your robo character, not the hammer. And then press OK. We're going to give this a name. Uh, mech underscore anim bp and then what we're going to do is just open this up and we are going to start working on it. So give it a couple of seconds to load and then we will be good to go. Now within here, within your main anim graph, it is going to ask for a final animation pose and in here we can hook up an animation. Now we are going to need more than one animation so what we're going to be doing is adding in a state machine. So drag out from the result and then just add in a state machine. So type it in state machine and add new state machine. Within here, you are going to notice it's going to give you a warning. That is because our state machine is empty. So what we need to do is double click on that to open it up. And then from there, we can start adding in the different states. Now this state machine is essentially just going to break down your animation blueprint into states. So you would have states for things like idling, walking, jumping, attacking and all of that good stuff and that's exactly what we're going to do. So from the entry what you want to do is drag out and add a new state. We are going to give this the name idle. So give it the name idle 
And then if we go ahead and double click on that to open it up, we can now feed an idle animation into here. So in the bottom right hand corner, go to your asset browser, find your idle animation, and then with that, just hook it up to your results. So just join the little humanoid icons there. And what it's going to do is now that whenever it's in its idle state, it is going to play the idle animation. And you will notice by default, it will be in that state. And our mech character on the left here, he is now playing that animation. So if we use the little menu at the top here to go back to our new state machine, we are going to need to create another state. And this state is going to be for walk slash run. And with this, we are going to need to use more than one animation. And this is where it's going to get complicated. We need it to change the speed of the legs depending on the speed of the character. And that's something that we've got to set up. And the way we're going to do this is using a blend space. A blend space is going to allow us to merge animations together and then control them based on inputs. And the input is going to be a variable for our speed. So let me show you how you're going to do this. Just compile this and close it as it is. Then what we're going to do is in our content browser, right click, create a new animation. And this time we are looking to create a blend space. Make sure it's not the 1D, it is uh, the 3D one that you're going to want. And the reason why you're going to want to use the 3D one is because it's going to allow you to add, you know, all kinds of different directions and stuff in it. You'll understand as I go into it. Pick the skeleton. The skeleton is the character and give us the name run underscore BS for blend space. Open this up and at the bottom here we have got a grid. We have got two axes. And what we're going to be putting on here is direction and speed. So let's go ahead and break this down. So the first one is going to be our direction. The second one is going to be our speed. And all I've done is just click these little arrows here to break that down. And all I'm doing is just feeding information into the name so I know which one is which. And as I've put that information on there, you can see at the bottom here, I have now got my speed and my direction clearly marked. And then what we're going to do for the minimum axis value for the direction, we're going to set this to minus 180. And then for the maximum, we're going to set this to 180. For the speed, it's going to go from zero to 600. 600 is the maximum movement speed we're going to be allowing for this game. Now then, let's start plotting on some animations onto this. So the first one you're going to want to have is your idle. You are going to want to have that at the bottom center. This is going to be when you're not moving. You want it to stand still and to shake its arms a little bit. When it's walking, which is going to be at the 300 point, you want it to play the walk animation. So all I've done is just drag that to the center point here, and I'm just dragging it in from my asset browser in the bottom right hand corner. If you want to preview how this is going to look, hold down shift and move your mouse along the grid. And you'll see as I move the mouse upwards to coincide with the speed going up, you can see it's moving quicker and quicker. And as you go down to zero, it's going to stop running. And you can see now we're starting to have a little bit more control over our animation. We're going to plot one last animation, which is our run. And we're going to dump that at the top there at speed 600. So if I go ahead and hold down shift, move it to 300, it's walking, move it all the way up to the top and it's sort of running. It's moving its legs up higher and higher to imitate that you're running essentially. That is everything that we need to do for this blend space. So go ahead and save it, close it. And then what we can do is jump back into our animation blueprint. And within our walk and run state, what we can do is drag our run underscore BS into the result just like that. And then what we need to get access to is our direction and speed. 
Now this is something where we've got to use blueprints to take control of. So at the moment we haven't got variables for that within this animation blueprint, so I need to go into my event graph and code it. So what we need to do is from event begin update animation, we are going to cast to the third person character. The third person character is going to control all the movement and the inputs and it's going to allow us to get the direction and the speed. So what we're going to do, object wildcard is going to be get player character and we're just going to leave it there. As third person character, we are going to get the actor rotation, so just type it in to find it. And we are also going to get the velocity. And these two pieces of information are going to allow us to take information and convert it to something that the blend space will use. So the way we're going to do this, if we drag out from the execution node here and type in calculate direction, what it's going to do is allow me to get the velocity and feed it into here and then a rotation and feed it into there. And what this is going to do is take those two pieces of information and then return it to a variable, a float for that direction. So return value, we are then going to promote this to a variable and we are going to give this the name direction. So you'll notice as soon as I press promote to variable, it's going to let me define a name in the bottom left hand corner there. What we also need to do with our velocity, drag out from the return value and type in vector length. And what this is going to do is allow me to convert it to something that will work with a float and will work with our blend space. So return value for this, we are going to promote this to a variable again and we are going to give this the name speed. So as you can see here now, I've now got variables for speed and our direction. If we hit compile, head over to our walk and run state, we can now go down to our variables in the bottom left, click drag and drop our direction in and do the same thing for speed, just making sure you get references to those, hook it up to your blend space, hit compile and this state is now good to go. Before you can use this, you need to set up some transitional rules. Transitional rules are just going to tell this animation blueprint when to use which state. So at the moment we got one going from idle to walk and run, we just need to create one that's going to go backwards. And now you can see that the engine knows that you can go from idle to walk and run and back again. Now to tell it when to, double click on this little circle icon here going from idle to walk and run. Within this, can enter transition, what you're going to do with this is get a reference to your speed and what we're going to do is just type in float greater than and it's going to go into this if the speed is greater than 10. And then go back to your state machine, open up the one for walk and run to idle and you want to make it go into idle if the speed is less than 10. So get speed and then we're going to do float, float less than and then 10. Sorry, this is greater than, so I just need to switch that around. So just float, and then the one that we're looking for is less than, which is this one here. And then set this to 10. What I'm also going to do is go over to my first one, and you can see it's greater than, and that is all good. If I hit compile, down at the bottom we shouldn't have any issues. If we go down to our anim preview editor, if we start turning up our speed, you are going to notice our character will start moving. So you can see now the engine is doing its bit, it's moving it when it needs to. So if I go ahead and hit compile, I can now implement this animation blueprint and this character into the game. The way we're going to do this is go into our third person BP folder, third person character, 
open this up, go to our viewport, select our little mannequin character, and simply go to mesh, skeletal mesh, and set this to our robo character instead. For the anim class, this is your blueprint you've just created, so mech underscore anim bp. Hit compile and you're going to notice he's going to start moving his arms. If we hit play, give it a couple of seconds to load up, you should now have your character and your character, your mech dude, is going to be running backwards, forwards, left, right and all of that good stuff. We still need to adjust the camera, but that is going to be something we'll be doing in another video. But for now guys, that is pretty much everything. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.